How's it going everyone? This is going to be a quick one, uh, just sort of an opinion piece, and I would love to hear your discussion in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Microservices suck. They are incredibly complex. They sprawl. They have tremendous complexity uh, overhead, especially uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, especially in the networking layer. They can be extremely painful for a DevOps team to manage because of how many different dev teams are involved. Many of the advantages of microservices have been spectacularly overstated, and yet they are probably the, the dominant widespread uh, way of thinking about developing specifically web services, modern web services, and even large legacy players that are coming from huge monoliths that already exist are moving to this microservices model. Almost all modern kind of like, I want to say like infrastructure or abstraction development, like tool development, uh, is being done using this model. And so things like Nomad, things like Kubernetes, um, console, like all of this kind of assumes a microservices uh, or distributed services approach in some way. So why is this such a widespread way of thinking about uh, developing modern web services? Well, there's actually a good reason. And I think the documentation uh, or the way that this is taught is like completely wrong because most of the advantages are not advantages for most companies, but there's one advantage that makes it worth it uh, and that fortunately or unfortunately justifies the massive complexity that people like me, anyone in DevOps, SRE, that kind of thing has to deal with. Um, on the bright side, it's job security, but uh, I just think it's taught wrong. So if even if you already understand microservices or writing and using microservices, I want to add kind of my two cents about why they are actually if not necessary, useful as an abstraction, and why they are worth the tremendous complexity cost that you pay when you use them. Why don't we just jump into Wikipedia and see how this is usually presented to people and what's wrong with that. Oh, Wikipedia, the microservices page. Teach me, Wikipedia, like you've taught me everything else I know. Let's go down to the benefits and see. Uh, these are really the primary benefits that microservices have been sold under, kind of the idea has been sold under since the very beginning, since the first time I heard about microservices in, I don't know, 2007, 2008. Um, modularity. This makes the application easier to understand. Sure, you decompose it, it's easier to understand each piece, develop, test each piece, and you become more resistant, or sorry, resilient to architecture erosion. That sounds, it sounds wonderful. But anyone who's seen the reality of scaling a uh, microservice architecture has seen the horrors of the data synchronization between different parts of the app, decomposing that stuff properly, scaling the data layer, you know, that doesn't become any easier just because because you've now scaled the application. What you're trading a monolith for is like a thousand times more complex than what you're saving by being able to scale some of the shit independently. Um, the, the amount of stuff that you start doing in the app, uh, in the networking layer as a result is intense. Dollars to donuts in the last 10 years that I've been working on microservices architectures, I can't name a single one where it wouldn't have been simpler in terms of infrastructure that it takes to express this application to just write a global like load balancing layer over over many instances of a monolith running. Just saying. Okay, what's the next selling point? Scalability. Since microservices are implemented and deployed independently, you can scale them independently, right? So the weakest link can be scaled and you don't have to scale the rest of it. You don't have to waste a bunch of time and money on uh, stuff that doesn't actually need to grow. Well, at a huge scale, that is absolutely true, but I've only worked on a scale where this actually was true and taken advantage of once in 12 years. For 99% of companies, even large companies, even large infrastructures, you are really just moving the cost and complexity out into uh, massive networking costs, this huge networking layer of um, TCP load balancers and application load balancers that need to run uh, a huge amount of network traffic between different environments. Uh, yeah, there are some advantages at scale, but 
I have never seen the cost go down as a result of microservices, never. Integration of heterogeneous and uh, legacy systems, sure, yeah, you can start breaking out services from a, from a huge monolith if that's what you're doing, or from a legacy system, kind of wrap a piece of it, make all calls to that piece now go out to some microservice that's living somewhere else, fine. Uh, you, but you could also just build a new monolith next to the old one. I'll call this a draw. And now here's the real reason, and it's so crazy to me that even on Wikipedia, this is at the very end, because to me, this is the one reason why even I still feel like it's a very, usually a good idea to do distributed systems, to do microservices. And that is distributed development. There is a real limit to how you can scale uh, a single a, a dev team working on a single monolith. Usually it devolves into a nightmare of politics and people stepping on each other's toes and really long release cycles. It's true that it becomes much harder to test. It's usually just testing is not as good. I don't know if that's a, a law of this or just highly correlated, but that's what I've seen. But this is really what you're buying. I feel like I'm, I'm telling the new DevOps and, and SRE folk like about the birds of the bees here. I don't know why they hide this because all of this is like occasionally true, nice to have, potentially, most of it's usually not true. These are usually not benefits of uh, doing microservices or they're, either, they're usually so small that you don't notice it. Um, this is the true benefit. You can scale, if you're scaling like a monolith the team that works on a monolith from like 10 to say 100 people, which is a thing that happens all the time, it's going to be a nightmare without having a distributed system that people can work on in smaller teams, you know, teams of 10. This is the real reason to do microservices. People love to talk about the, the scaling problems of your Amazons and your Googles, but it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit of tech LARPing to me because you're not at that scale and unless you work at one of those companies and it's true they're large employers many of you will work at those companies but most companies the the absolute majority of companies this is they're sort of cargo culting oh google does this so we should do this too oh google's doing this in interviews we should do this too well google's solving very different problems than most companies and most people it's very easy to poo poo microservices because they are more complex and there is huge overhead and it's usually more expensive to do and it's usually less reliable in some ways than a well-written monolith, but this makes it all worth it. So as much as it pains me to say it, <laughs> microservices, if you're doing anything that is going to grow quickly, that has to grow, um, that's going to scale, and I don't mean like you and your buddy doing something, you're probably gonna spend more time breaking it into microservices than you are actually doing anything else. But I don't understand why this is always the last thing people mention. Often it's something people don't mention when you like ha hear someone rattle off the benefits of microservices. It's just this mechanical like thing that I feel like our industry has been kind of indoctrinated with because who writes the books? It's people from Amazon, it's people from Google. Um, and they're naturally talking about problems that those companies are facing. But it's like almost no one is facing those problems. Very, very few companies have something that is truly that hard to scale where all of these other things start coming into play you're talking like thousands of engineers then you're then then all of this other stuff matters so now you've heard my two cents about why i think microservices are actually in general a good idea and an important idea beyond just the job security of everyone like like us who works with these tremendously complex infrastructures what i'm really curious about is what your experiences have been everybody that's worked with microservices uh, either from the dev side or from the infrastructure sre side what have your experiences been uh, and what's your take on this? I would love to hear it. Um, what are the big benefits and drawbacks that you see? Uh, do you see another model as better? Um, I'm curious. I, you know, while I maintain that it's taught the wrong way, I'm still interested to, to hear from people at different companies of different sizes and how you're implementing this, how it's working, what the costs you see are, uh, et cetera. If you're new to all of this and you're confused by what is going on with all this microservices stuff, uh, may I heartily recommend my Udemy course on sort of Linux sysadmin and cloud basics. Uh, I'm actively expanding and growing the course. Um, there's been a huge influx of new students lately and uh, it's a good community and place to ask questions, uh, build real Linux and like web hosting and 
uh, sysadmin, and now cloud skills. Just click the link in the description below, and uh, I think there's a coupon code attached to that, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to check out the course that actually practically teaches you this stuff to some degree. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.